Hi everyone, this is Pierrick from P2Design. One of the first thing we do whenever we start our rigging journey in Blender is to assign our mesh to the armature using the automated weights creation method. But what to do whenever we get this error message? And basically, how does Blender deal with those automation? You will get the answers in this video. It's a sample from the course I just released, The Art of Effective Rigging in Blender, 2nd edition. We already talked about vertex groups in the second chapter, and we skinned both the ball and the spider ball character in edit mode. And it's a very convenient way to assign a mesh to a rig when working on art surface or mechanical characters or objects. Now there's another way to assign weight to those vertices, and it's what we call weight painting. And this is something a lot of beginners are afraid of or don't tackle properly. So let's learn how it works. Right now, our character has no vertex groups. So when I select a vertex, I can't see any vertex group in the item panel. If we want, we can create a vertex group manually. And if the vertex group has the exact same name as the bone, it can be used to deform the mesh. So as an example, I will create a new vertex group and name it def then 02.l and then with those vertices selected I will click the assign button. Now those vertices belong to a group that has the same name as the overlaying bone. So if I switch to pose mode on my armature the tip of the thumb should move. But it doesn't because we don't have an armature modifier on our character. If I add an armature modifier and source my armature object and now I move this bone the tip of the thumb will follow. Creating vertex group manually can be interesting whenever you are adding new bones to your deformation armature. But when you're assigning your character to a full armature, that's a bit tedious. Fortunately, there are more convenient methods. First, let me remove the armature I just created. To create those bone groups faster, we can first select our character, then the armature, and press Ctrl P. We already see the option with empty groups. When we click this one, Blender will create a vertex group for any bone that has the deformation option enabled and the vertex group will have the same name as the corresponding bone. From there, it's up to us to assign the vertices to the corresponding vertex group and this is my favorite method. This way, I have full control over the weight painting. But there are automated options. So let's press Ctrl P again and this time choose with automatic weight. But unfortunately it doesn't work for us and we're meeting one of the most common bugs when it comes to automatic weighting. Blender was not able to calculate the weight to be assigned to each vertices. And there could be multiple reasons to that. And once you know them, it's not that hard to fix this. If you're enjoying the content so far, please consider giving it a like and maybe share it with a friend. And if you don't like it, just share it with the people you don't like. And as usual, don't forget to leave a little message in the comment section below to the YouTube's algorithm gods. One common issue is what we used to call the double. And basically it's overlapping vertices. It's something that can happen pretty often when you're modeling and you mistakenly extrude a vertex or duplicate it. To get rid of them, we can select our object, enter edit mode, select all the vertices and press M to merge by distance. In previous versions of Blender, this was called remove doubles, but the operation was exactly the same. We can see Blender removed 32 vertices, so I had this problem on this model. Now you have to be very cautious whenever you're using this operation. Whatever vertices that are closer one to the other, under this distance threshold will be merged. Depending on the size of your character mesh, you may get different results. And a wrong merge distance value can ruin your model. So you should always use very small distance based on your character size. 
So once my vertices are properly merged, let's get back in object mode and reparent our object to the armature with automatic weight and it still fails. Another reason our automatic weight may fail is when you have an object made of separated meshes. If I enter edit mode on this simple object, you can see that it's made of two disconnected meshes. And Blender seems to have difficulties to calculate the automatic weight on overlapping meshes that are not connected inside a single object. What we can do is select all the vertices and press P to separate them by loose part. Blender will create one separated object per connected meshes. So let's try on our character. Select it, enter edit mode, select all the vertices, press P and choose by loose part. All the arms, fingers, legs, bolts and whatnot are now separated objects. And we are just left with the torso being a single connected mesh. So let's press tab to exit edit mode and with all those objects selected, Shift click the armature to make it the active object and press Ctrl P with automatic weight. And it worked. So now I can select all my objects and make the torso active, the last one we had selected, and press Ctrl J to join them all into a single object. And now our character is automatically skinned. Now let me cancel this and show you the last method. So I just cancel everything and now the next method is simply to scale up both the rig and the mesh together. So one of the suspected problem is the difficulty Blender has to calculate the automatic weight on small distances. So when you scale up your mesh and your rig, you increase those distance. So if I now try to press Ctrl P and choose automatic weight, I don't get any error message, but the result is quite weird. My character is so small and my rig kept the scale we gave it. So let's select the rig and press Alt S to reset the scale. Then I want to reset my character scale. So I will first unparent it, pressing Alt P and choose clear parent. My character is no longer parented to the armature, but it still has the armature modifier. So it should deform and when I move the arm bone, it does, but you can see that some fingers are left behind. So the best method for this model was to separate all the meshes into different objects. But this may be different from one model to the other. So just try the different method we just saw. There's another method to automatically calculate the weight, but I never use it, to be honest. So let me get rid of all the vertex groups so that I can show it to you. The process is the same. I select first my character, then the armature, press Ctrl P, and this time I will choose envelope weight. No error message, so I guess we are good to go. Let's move the arm and it's all weird and mushy. We saw that before, but we can change the way bones are displayed. And one of the mode is envelope. When we select a bone, we can see a transparent capsule shape around it. And this is the so-called envelope of the bone. When we try to automatically calculate the weights, Blender will bind to this bone any vertex that is inside the envelope of the bone. Now we can change the envelope size of the bone by entering edit mode. Press Ctrl LS and you're now able to change the envelope size of the bone. As an example, I will increase the envelope size on the arm, the forearm and the hand so that it binds the mesh. You can also change the envelope size directly in the item panel. With that done, I will switch back to object mode and I will reparent my character to the armature and choose with envelope weights. I now get better deformations, but the vertices that were not inside the envelope of the bones were not assigned to the corresponding vertex group. So it's still not perfect. I believe there are some use cases if you're rigging a snake, for example, but in 11 years, I've never used this method to rig a character. Not saying it's bad, just saying that I don't use it at all. This is the end of this video, a sample from my new course. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you in the next one. Bye.